Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We're all in our places with bright, shiny faces. I'm, I'm, I'm dragging today. It's been a long four days from uh, a mentor luncheon, National Day of Prayer, Luke's place, the service yesterday. Pray, 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 pray that the Spirit energizes the place today. Uh, I got a feeling he will. You know, I got a feeling he will. Uh, because again, where God shows up, his Spirit is there, and he does what he does in an amazing way. That's why he's drawn us here together today, is to receive his gifts. Uh, the gift of his word, uh, the gift of the sacrament of the altar, in, in with and under the uh, bread and the wine, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but also in the gathering of his people as we, as we get to share his gifts through us. Uh, again, uh, just we want to keep uh, Vicar Tim. I'm already, he's not officially a vicar yet, by the way. I will tell you that because we have to install him as such. Uh, but I'm still going to call him Vicar Tim. I sent him a card, and I put Vicar in quotation marks uh, for him to get used to that. But we need to keep him and Ashley and the family in our prayers as they continue that preparation of moving here. Uh, we did send it out electronically. Uh, he did send us a, a, a sort of a... Newsletter. Thank you. <laughs> I told you, my brain's a little lacking today. He sent us a newsletter. Uh, if, if you need a hard copy, there are hard copies out on the table out there. Uh, but otherwise, we sent it out electronically. And um, there's he, he, he's going to learn. He sent all of his personal information. <laughs> so you can inundate him. Actually, do that. Do that. Send him cards. Send him cards of encouragement um, as, as we do that. Uh, again, uh, He's, he's got that last big push to get through, and that encouragement for him uh, will, be, will be very much so. And, and don't forget Ashley and the kids, too, uh, as you do that. Uh, so let us pray for them uh, as they make that preparation. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that as you continue to work in your church, you, you find uh, men, you find uh, women, you find children uh, to place in your church to continue that work of ministry. And, and we thank you for Tim and Ashley and, and the family. Uh, we pray for Ashley uh, as, uh, as that birth is progressing ever closer, that you just keep her healthy and, and that that birth can be one of celebration. But Heavenly Father, as Tim finishes up his classes, as they get prepared for their move here to Blairsville, uh, just let everything fall into place, let things run smoothly, and we look forward to the time that we get to celebrate in person together the work that you are doing among us, not only for our sake, not only for the sake of the community, but even more importantly, for the sake of your kingdom. And we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, as God has gathered us together this day, we take some time to be in prayer. Uh, let the Spirit guide your prayer. Use a, a hymn verse. Uh, use the text for the day, which is in Acts. Uh, we do so as... Is Don here? I saw Jan. Is he watching? No. <laughs> we'll sing happy birthday to him anyway, and now he'll be forced to watch it. So let's sing happy birthday to Don. No, she's scrambling. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Don. Happy birthday. You'll get the card. Not going to guarantee on the brownie getting home. <laughs> I thought you were coming up to sit with your family. Oh, well. 
I, I know he, he's the elder on duty today. Um, well, as I was about ready to say, or is in the midst of saying, uh, it is good to be here. God is good. All the time. And all the time. And so now, as he gathers us for worship, uh, let the Holy Spirit prepare our hearts and minds. Take some time in prayerful meditation. We do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played. At the name of Jesus, we fall before our King of kings and Lord of lords, but it's also in the name of Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit by which we were brought into his family as we remember our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. 
The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. We now pause for silent confession, being reminded where we have erred and strayed from God's purposes, where we have fallen short of his glory. But it's also at this time where we are reminded what God does for us as he draws us together to receive those things that Jesus Christ has done for us. Let us bow our heads for silent confession. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Gracious God, in heartfelt repentance, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are sin-stained people by nature. Each day we have sinned and done things we ought not to have done and have not done that which we are to have been doing as your servants. We have not seen people in the loving way that you see them. We have not always been ready to care and quick to help. We do indeed deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Abide with us and grant us forgiveness of all our sins. By the power of the Holy Spirit at work within our hearts and lives, lead us into the ways that reflect your goodness and love. God is loving and merciful. He sees us with loving eyes and graciously hears our supplications. By the command of our Lord and as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
The first reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been cho chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witnesses that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water from baptizing this people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by the water, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. 
you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hopefully I'll remember to point out the bulletin cover at the end. Because as I worked on this text for today, it really drew me to the importance of baptism that I think sometimes we forget uh, in our living out of the faith. But I want to share with you, those of you that were here last week or watched last week, this is part two of the sermon. I didn't realize it was going to be a two-part sermon, but last week we fo focused on people that we don't normally associate with. And that was in Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch. It was just an odd case. Now, granted, in this week's text, Acts 10, that Lisa read... It wasn't a typical person that the Jew would relate with, but I think we would find ourselves relating with him because he was a very devout person. In fact, he was a leader within his community. He was well-spoken and thought of among those in his community. And we probably could say that he gave generously. He probably prayed constantly. He participated in worship or tried to as best as he could. And we even hear in the text that he feared God. But there were some among that community that probably questioned it. And they probably would have said, well, is that enough? I think Peter, if he hadn't had the early part of the proceedings to this chapter, where he saw the sheet drop down with the clean and the unclean, Peter probably would have said, is that enough? But because Peter had that vision, he knew God was on the move again, just like Philip found out last week in our text, that God again moves in the way that he desires, and he was challenging Peter, and I hope he challenges us to see things a little differently in regards to the matters of faith. Faith is actualized in what God does, and there are many times that God actualizes faith in unconventional settings. That's what happens in Acts chapter 10. That's what happens sometimes in our own lives. But I think too often in the church, we try to actualize faith in the same cookie cutter mode time and time again. We want to make people Christian. Let me emphasize that again. Key word there. We want to make people Christian. And within our own church body, we work to make people Lutheran. We want them to secure certain markers, certain markers that as they sort of check them off the list, they become qualified. They become qualified as a Christian. Oh, even more importantly, they become qualified as a Lutheran. One of those things is being catechized. It's, it's simply data as belief. Or as they would have said on Dragnet, just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> Period. That's too often how we look at that whole process. Just, just fill them up with facts, just the facts, and if you've got the right data, you've got the right belief. 
Sometimes it's the matter of preserving our long-held, well-worn traditions. Where are you, Jean? Oh, there he is, back there. Your favorite word, adiaphora. We, we want to preserve these long-held, well-worn traditions, but these traditions are what we call adiaphora. They have some scriptural reference to them, but they are not commanded by scripture to be done. But we hold very tightly upon them, and we want them to be one of those markers by which we qualify people. The other, the other thing is we sort of skew appropriate activity, appropriate practices toward our purposes. And if people do them correctly, which candle do you light first? But sometimes we skew these appropriate practices and we make them a burden upon somebody because we want them skewed toward our purposes. And so we want people, we want to keep people safely within our comfortable constraints. But brothers and sisters in Christ, God reveals himself outside of our box at times. He does reveal himself within our box, but many times he reveals himself outside of our box. And sometimes we overthink things, and so sometimes we need to not overthink the ways and the places where God desires to work. Because as I shared last week, and I'm going to finish the story this week, God opens up possibilities to observe his righteousness outside our typical boundaries. He opens up these possibilities where we wouldn't have even imagined meeting him, but he opens up these possibilities for us to observe his righteousness at work outside of the boundaries that we typically put around them. He allows us to gather with and welcome strangers. Sometimes here, but it's even better when it's out there on their turf in their territory where they're more comfortable than we are. Because it's in that moment where we get to discern and understand the chief teaching of Peter in this text. God shows no partiality. We want to put restrictions. We want to put certain kind of check marks next to people in order to qualify them. God doesn't do that. God shows no partiality. He desires to save all men and women and children. And so we need to discern and understand this. God shows no partiality. And the best way to do it is to really, truly talk with people and help them to know and to understand that what we know and understand is Jesus' death and resurrection. For me, a sinner who needs that. It's all about what Jesus has done for us, not what we do for Jesus. And it's that death and resurrection of Jesus where we get to meet him. We get to meet him as a history-shaping world-shaking, living Lord of all. For those of you who are writing that down, we get, to, we get to meet Jesus. We get to meet him as a history-shaping, world-shaking, living Lord of all. We know he's living because God is at work. God continues to work. God, God did that work on the cross and from the empty tomb. And as he is, Jesus ascended, and he's still doing that work today. And sometimes we in the Lutheran church overemphasize confirmation, and we forget all about baptism. That's why that baptismal font sits there. 
for us to be reminded. That's when we come up today to receive the sacrament of the altar. That will be uncovered, and you can be reminded of that. Because that's where God works. It's at baptism where God's love gets personal. And baptism is where you and I were joined with Jesus. That's where you and I were joined to Jesus. That's where you and I were joined in Jesus. And yes, I have to go there. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It was in that moment of baptism where the Holy Spirit was poured out upon you and me. And that Holy Spirit continues to be poured out on you and me just as we have been doing week in and week out. But it's also where God desires to bring people who have not known him. He wants to bring them to the baptismal font so the Holy Spirit can be poured out, out upon them just as they are. No qualifications other than coming and knowing that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. And boy, God does it in some amazing ways. Because the Holy Spirit is always ahead of us. So sometimes the Holy Spirit interrupts what we're doing. He interrupts and he energizes. Boy, did I need that today. The Holy Spirit interrupts and energizes his mission among us and in us and through us. And that mission is to invite those outside of his kingdom into the gathering of his people and to, to include them at the fellowship at the table. Not necessarily Holy Communion in all cases, because I want to point out one thing. In most, and and, and this, is, this is what is missing in our world today. What happens at the dining room table? So many families are broken apart going here and there and everywhere that they never spend any time at the dining room table. But I've got a feeling your dining room table was like my dining room table growing up. What happened at the dining room table? It was more than just eating, wasn't it? There were, there were conversations that went on. There were questions that were being asked. There were things that were being shared. Life, with, life together was being shared. And that's where we need to be in that banqueting table, that fellowship table within the church. We need to invite people to come up to that table so we can sit down and have the conversation with them and be ready to be interrupted. Because that's the neat thing in this text. And Lisa, thank you. I don't know if that was a stumble or whether you intended to do it. You, you, you slowed down while Peter was still saying these things. Now, that's not an invitation for you guys to stand up and interrupt my sermon. <laughs> However, if the Holy Spirit is moving you to... You can say an amen. You can say an hallelujah. You can say preach it. You can do those things that the Holy Spirit is moving it because it's while Peter was still saying these things and while you are going to be saying those things with other people, be ready to be interrupted. Be ready to have the sense of the wind of change that is starting to stir things. And it's going to be in those moments where you need to follow God's lead. Because he's going to take you into places where you never thought you might go. And be ready to respond where the gospel falls. And more importantly, be ready to respond upon whom the gospel has fallen. 
Yes, you're going to question some of your expectations. You're going to be challenged by some of your normal ways of doing things. But you'll find out that the Easter work didn't just end at the empty tomb. It goes on and on and on through you and me. I shared with you a story last week about Mike. I didn't finish the story. Because some of you asked me, and some of you, I shared the, the ending of the story already. Well, when I went back to get the kayak from Mike, uh, I was getting my car ready. I was clearing things out in order to try to secure it into my vehicle. And so he went over to where the kayak was, and he was getting it ready. And I, I, I did mention to him, I said, make sure there's no snakes in it. <laughs> well, when I walked over to go to where Mike was to carry the kayak over to my car, he sold the wrong kayak. He sold the kayak I wanted to somebody else. He was so apologetic. I go, Mike, my purpose was not to get a kayak. God sent me to you. Or did God send Mike to me? Because it really has captured my vision with these two texts over the last couple of weeks. Who is it in my midst that God is calling me and interrupting my life to bring to the baptismal waters? And let your prayer be, Lord, open my eyes to see the one or ones that you desire to interrupt my life with. To share the truth about Jesus Christ. To share the truth about ourselves and the need for a savior. And there's no qualifications. Other than to let Jesus bring you to the waters. To receive the Holy Spirit. It's all about baptism. Once they are baptized, then bring them to the fellowship table and have the conversation. Amen. Amen.
please join me in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank God for the Christian church and pray that God's people may live confidently and would joyfully share the message of salvation in word and deed. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, we pray that we may be blessed with all grace and give evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Lord, be with us and bless us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our families, our neighborhoods, and our communities. We ask the blessing of our bountiful God on all those who share in our Christian fellowship and join with us in worship. Also, we pray for all who are part of the household of faith, whose presence here this day support and strengthens us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also pray for those with special concerns and needs this day, those who are hospitalized or shut in, those who are grieving at this time, the unemployed and the underemployed, the chronically ill, and all those whose needs are known to us. Mike, Debbie Shub, Kim and Jeff, Ava, Sally, Frank and Marge, Ed, J. Lord, grant that we may bring your blessings to situations of need in all places. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Most merciful God, we thank you for all those faithful people whose word and actions have guided us in the past, especially remembering those no longer with us on earth, who now share in your eternal presence by the working of your Holy Spirit, Direct us to walk your servant's way throughout our lives, seeing each other through your loving eyes until that day when we stand in your glorious presence in heaven. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. As we transition to the service of the sacrament, again, I want to point out the laminated card in the pew rack. Again, as... Uh,